Hello there guys. I thought you would enjoy a quick midweek video this week as I'd like to show you this new book that I got from uh, Amazon. I mean I say new but it was first published in 1977 and it's this Airfix Magazine Guide 21 Modeling Armoured Cars. The main reason I got this book is because it delves a lot into scratch building which is something that I've wanted to have a look at for a while. If we flip the book over we can see some of the examples of the models which are built inside this book. So let's have a quick look. So first off we can see inside we've got a list of um, other Airfix magazine guides. So apparently there were 22 of these in total. Of course they're way out of print by now and probably quite hard to get hold of. But this one I managed to find on Amazon and it only cost me a few pounds. The book itself is split into four sections. The first one is the introduction and then it covers various aspects of um, how scales work and how to calculate scales and things like this. I guess this could still be of interest to people, but obviously a lot of this information these days you could find on the internet. So we've got, for example, a table here that converts uh, different sizes to different scales. Incidentally, all the photos in this book are of models which are built in it. So we've got a Japanese armoured car there, which we cover later on. And then we get to the first section of real interest, which is four-wheeled vehicles. And we start with this Beaverette Mark III, which is one of those um, sort of classic uh, improvised British vehicles. Basically it was an armoured car built on a, um, a regular car chassis. They actually have one of these across the road from me in uh, Duxford. Like a lot of these improvised vehicles, there are a few different versions of it, or slight alterations to the turret, things like that. But I think that would be quite an interesting uh, model to build. Either scratch building from uh, styving and so on like this book suggests or possibly if I'm being a bit ambitious trying to knock something up in a um, 3D program for 3D printing a CAD program so we've got some quite basic drawings here again these days with the internet you could probably find more detailed drawings but I still think it's quite interesting to look through this and to look at how the model is built up in stages here with, from the basic shape there and then the wheels which I think the text says were taken from another kit moving on down to adding the doors, the windows, the rivets, and so on. And the text tells you what things are made from, how these you know, various shapes are cut out, and so on, so it does have a few useful tips, including how to use hot water to mould styrene into a curved shape. Then we've got the final picture there. I suspect that uh, brown and green camouflage note there probably, probably just reflects the fact that uh, colours weren't so well known back then, because I think we know now that uh, green and brown wasn't a camouflage, it would have been brown and uh, blue-black, I think. Then we move on to the um, Bedford 30-ton uh, truck. Again, 176 scale. Again, another great um, improvised British vehicle, and, and something you're not really going to find um, in the injection kit uh, market, I suspect. Once again there, we've got that basic sort of chassis from, presumably from another kit, and then the scratch-built, very angular, um, uh, body at the back. And I think the way this worked is the body has a double panel steel skin. Actually no tail light doesn't, it has a wooden skin I think at the back, but the gap between those two skins is filled with um, gravel and sand and things to provide a kind of uh, certain protection, a certain level of um, armour protection to the uh, occupants. I'd never heard of this next um, vehicle, the uh, Sahariana. It almost looks like something out of Mad Max or something like that. But apparently this was an Italian um, World War II reconnaissance vehicle. Then we move on to a World War I armoured car. I suspect this is available now um, from, um, is it Copper State Models? I know they do a number of armoured cars from World War One, so potentially this one is available, but it's still very interesting to look at it. And then a tiny 1914 AC armoured car. Again, a very simple design that one, I could almost maybe see myself doing a, uh, a version of that. Then we move up a step in complexity to the Staghound. 
I've got stack helms now available in, in a variety of scales. I've built one myself from Bronco. But a good example of kit bashing here. Again, the SDKFZ223, also something that's available now from uh, or from Tamiya, Dragon and a few others, but still interesting to see. The third chapter of the book covers multi-wheeled vehicles, including this quite rare Japanese vehicle here. The Type 2592. Again, not something I know a lot about. I don't know a lot about Japanese tanks in general, but um, I don't think I've seen any of these in kit form before. Construction stage of the hull there, 30 thou card, 20 thou card. The finished model doesn't look too bad in view of the scant information. To be honest, I think if I built a scratch model um, like that, I'd be very happy with it, to be, to be quite honest. It looks very nice to me. Then a few more, more complex and more modern vehicles over here. A Russian BA-10 armoured car. So there's loads of great stuff in here. It's just as um, interesting to me for the unusual subject matter as it is for the skills of scratch building these. And now go do it yourself. And the first challenge it sets us is this Saladin, which um, probably isn't the best first project, but would certainly be an interesting one. Hong Kong 1970. So there we go, guys. That was a quick look at this book from Airfix. There are a few other vehicles that I would really like to uh, investigate a bit more in terms of either scratch building or uh, 3D design for 3D printing. One of those would be this Bison. Again, this is a British improvised vehicle, which is essentially a concrete pillbox on the back of a truck. And there are slightly different versions of it. In some cases, the cab and the pillbox are encased as one. In other examples, they're separate. But it does lend itself, I think, quite well to uh, early scratch building because it is quite angular and uh, quite straightforward in its design. So I think that's something that's going to... Uh, it's going to be on my radar, I think. I've got lots of projects going on at the moment, but uh, yeah, it's still on my radar. So I hope you enjoyed that quick look at the book. If you've ever done any scratch building, uh, let me know in the comments below. And don't worry, this video does not replace the weekend video, so there will still be one uploaded uh, this weekend. And we will be sticking on the theme of armour for that. So until then, let me say thank you to all of you for watching. And until next time, have fun modelling.